On this episode of Western Sport Fishing, we travel to Southern Alberta to demonstrate a few tricks and techniques that can help visiting fly fishermen become more successful. Later on in this show, Tim and Nick show some opening day cutthroat strategies from June 16th of this year. That's coming up on Western Sport Fishing. We've seen some rising, so I have the stimulator up top, which is an attractor fly. So we'll see if they're actually taking that. And almost a couple feet down, I have my dropper fly, which is a gold ribbed hare's ear nymph. And if they're not hitting it on top, they'll be hitting it on the bottom. So we'll see what they do. Oh! One just hit the nymph. And you'll know when they hit the nymph because your drive fly will get pulled under. It almost acts like a strike indicator. Either that or you're hitting bottom, but you set on everything. The fish in this pool were nosing the big drive fly and they couldn't take it down. So I'm gonna to switch to something a little smaller, maybe a caddis pattern. Cause we've seen some coming off here. Maybe even a smaller stimulator. So we'll be back in a couple. Well, look at this thing. Well, that's a nice size cut. Oh man, they're just digging. Nice fight. Oh, we noticed some nice sized ones in this pool too. So we'll get a shot at those ones as well. If I could get my net off here, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to net it. Well, maybe I could get it in my hand. Oh yeah, that's a dandy. Looks like it's been caught a few times though. Judging by its mouth. This episode features the Old Man River watershed of southwestern Alberta accessed via the Forestry Trunk Road. The road is a well-maintained gravel road which features many beautiful provincial campgrounds. The geographically diverse landscapes should be taken in by everyone as meadows combine with beautiful mountains just north of the Crow's Nest Pass. There are many smaller to mid-sized rivers which spoil fly anglers from opening day and plenty of wildlife to stop in and say hello to you while you fish. There's many small hidden gems that exist in this region and an abundant species of trout in all sizes for visiting anglers. Be sure to visit the Forestry Trunk Road when visiting Alberta, Canada. Got it. Oh, beauty, what a take. Just classic. And it's another dandy. Oh, wow. <laughs> Elk hair caddis, just a classic Alberta stream pattern. If you don't have one in your box, then you're missing out. And this is a five weight rod. This thing's a really nice cutthroat trout. Believe me about that big one up there now? I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Hopefully he's in better condition than that last one. That last one seemed to have some mouth problems there. Some, maybe some anglers using barbed hooks or illegal hardware. Oh geez, that is a dandy trout. Oh, I'm gonna have to grab the net for this one. This one is really nice. God, this one's huge, hey? Wow. Well, if they want us to chase them, we'll have to chase them. I ain't going, I ain't going away without getting this one to net. Oh boy, <laughs> quality cut, baby, quality cut. Look at the, oh, look at the thickness on that fish. <laughs> oh man, that's a hog. And that is a quality, quality cutthroat trout. That one's got to be pushing 20 inches.
welcome to Western Fly Tying. Today we're going to tie a golden stone dry fly on a number six dry fly hook, which I already have in the vise here. I have my number six dry fly hook in the vise, and I have a six aught tong thread, which I'm going to put about two thirds up the shank and start wrapping it in. Now that the thread's at the back of the hook, I'm going to take some brown dubbing and some golden stone fly dubbing to make a mottled colored body. The first layer of dubbing we're going to put on the thread is going to be brown. And we're going to do a nice layer of brown dubbing and then put just a little wisp of golden stone over top. This creates a dual colored body. Now that I have my base layer of brown dubbing, I'm going to take just a few fibers of this golden stone antron dubbing and lightly put it over top of the brown. Now that we've dubbed the body, we're going to wrap that forward to the end of the thread that we put on at the start of the fly. The next step is going to be tying in our yarn underwing. You're going to measure it back to about the bend of the hook and tie it in with some strong wraps of thread. Now what I'm going to do is take a chunk of my deer hair and put it on over top of this yarn. But first what I'm going to do is put it in a hair stacker to even the tips out. As you can see, the tips of the deer hair are fairly uneven before you use a hair stacker. All you have to do to use a hair stacker is take your clump of deer hair put it in the hair stacker tips down and give it a few taps on a hard surface like a table or if you like I use sometimes use the heel of my hand and that can also work. Keep the stacker at a slight angle, pull it out and now as you can see we've got deer hair with nice even tips. So now with my even deer tips I'm going to put them over top of the yarn wing and overlap them just by about a quarter of an inch. Now, to tie in the deer hair effectively, what you're going to want to do is take three or four loose wraps, pull straight down on the thread, that'll cinch down. Now what you do once it's tightened is you clip off the ends of the deer hair and go over it with a few tightening wraps. Now I have some white rubber legs here and I'm going to tie in one strand on either side just to give this fly a little bit of action in the water. You're going to want the back rubber legs to be about as long as the wing and the front rubber legs to be just a little bit shorter, maybe three quarters of the length. Part of this fly's effectiveness is the use of multi-colors. For example, the body's colors of brown and golden stone. For the hackle, we're going to use the same principle and utilize brown and grizzly hackle to create a mottled color. To prep the hackle for tying onto the hook, I line up both pieces until the tips are together and then taking my fingers, peel about the quarter inch of hackle fibers off of each stem. That just makes a nice base that you can get good tight tying wraps. Begin tying the hackle between the rubber legs with two or three or four tight turns before moving off behind the rubber legs, tying the hackle down all the way to the wing. Once that's complete, bring your thread forward to the eye of the hook so that we're ready to whip finish the fly at the end. We're going to take both pieces of hackle at the same time and start wrapping towards the eye of the hook, making about two turns behind the rubber legs before moving between them with one turn and another two to three turns in front of the rubber legs. Once you've wrapped the hackle and tied it off with the eye of the hook, clip it right close to the hook shank and do a whip finish with five or six turns to finish the fly off. Well, there you have it, the finished golden stone dry fly. This is a very effective fly to use for cutthroat trout streams and any freestone stream in the spring when stoneflies are hatching. You can even mix and match colors and match pretty much any hatch of stoneflies you're going to encounter. across some nice uh, rising cutthroats in this hole and the water is nice and low so it's really easy to see them feeding which is characteristic of summertime cutthroat trout whereas earlier in the season Tim and Nick were using uh, a tractor pattern such as stimulators you could you could still get away with them at this time of year but a little later in the summer uh, smaller dry flies will work quite a bit better if there's a 
prevalent hatch, I guess. And originally we were going to do a show on fishing, oh there's one nice one up there to the right. Originally we were going to do the show on fishing hopper droppers, but it's important to adapt to your fishing conditions. And we noticed the fish were just nudging the bigger flies. So we, oh that's a huge one to the right. So we downsized to smaller caddises. And uh, I guess we should call this show the Adaptive Fisherman. I know there's one holding up in that shallower ripple up there. A lot of people uh, believe that in hot weather such as what we got here, it's going to be 32 degrees today, a lot of people believe that the cutthroats will sit in deeper holes, which is true to some extent, but I find that on the warmer days they like to sit more in the riffles because there's more oxygen and uh, bug life. There's more oxygen and bug, bug life in the riffle, so that's where they like to sit and that's where we usually concentrate our efforts for cutthroat. There he is. Oh, we got a dandy here. Whew. Maybe I should have brought my six weight for these cutthroats. They fight good in this creek. Oh, these cutthroats, they don't jump like rainbows, but these bigger ones sure like to shake, rattle, and roll. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Ooh. That's a nice one. Oh, I want to avoid getting them into that. <laughs> this is great fishing right here. Oh, in uh, Alberta. That's a beauty, 18 inch cutthroat for sure. That's my personal biggest for these creeks. You want to make sure in this quicker water you point their heads upstream. Now, it was becoming evident as me and Andy kept fishing this stretch of stream that someone had already been fishing it before us. So what you usually want to do when that happens, switch to a smaller fly. Because what they might have ran through there with was the normal patterns and the trout will become a little more picky and they'll go for that small pattern right in those riffles as uh, we just showed you with that last fish. I put on a small size 14 elk hair caddis but it actually has a deer hair wing so it floats higher so it's more like a deer hair caddis but yeah those fish are just taking it like crazy so that's another little tip for you when you come out to these streams and someone's fishing ahead of you or has fished before you even even an hour before because these fish will still be a little weary to take the dry fly. Saw a nice one give himself away against this bank so hopefully he'll take this elk hair caddis pattern. I'll start off by fishing the water I know he's not in but there might be other fish in and I'll slowly work my way in to where he is. Hopefully it hasn't been caught already and it's just teasing us. There it is, got it. That's exactly where it gave itself away. It's not a huge one, but putting up a nice fight nonetheless. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a fair sized West Hill cutthroat. Nice, good average size for a creek. And we've noticed that it's been a great day on this creek. Some classic cutthroat trout water. I don't know. This might be my favorite creek in this area. Oh, got a little scrap left in him. Pop that little caddis pattern out of there. Show you the, oh. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Can't see the fish. Tim Cheer and Nick Slaconich did some filming on opening weekend of cutthroat trout season. Have a look at how they fooled some early season cutthroat trout. Just picked up a beauty on the nymph and what we found today is 
they're, they're taking the dries and the nymphs, but we seem to be getting quite a bit on the nymph. It is opening day, so the water's still pretty cold. And this is a real dandy, wow. Oh. Two weight's a nice rod for this creek, but uh, Nick has the four weight today and it's pretty nice as well. Let's see if I could land this. Oh, beauty, beauty trout. <laughs> I'll see if I could hold it up here. Oh yeah, that's a cut bow. Nice, nice size to it. We'll uh, let it back here. Looks like something was at its fin there. Caught it on the uh, gold ribs hair's ear nymph. That's been working pretty well today. I lost it in the tree, but I kind of knew that was going to come, so. Sometimes fishing these small creeks, you just have to go for the hit and worry about fighting the fish afterwards. Seems to be a few rain clouds rolling in, which, both a good and bad thing. It'd be good for a hatch, but it's bad because the water's already a little bit off color, and this is a good fish. Big spawning colored fish. Oh, this is a nice cutthroat, probably the biggest we've got on this creek today. And just beautiful colors. Oh, this is a beautiful cutthroat. Oh, there he is. This is why you fish for cutthroat trout. You don't go for the size, you go for the scenery and the colors. Got that little fly out of there. All right, we'll try to get a uh, close up of this guy. It's gonna be a little tough and it's just starting to rain like we were talking about. Well, let's see if I can get this. That's good. Right on. Well, that's one side of this pool, so we'll give the other one a shot and uh, maybe go hunker down because it's raining. A special thanks to Kim and Nick for getting that early season footage, and thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this show, and we'll see you next time on Western Sport Fishing. that wind blew me into the stupid branch. I think I lost my nymph too. Yeah, just shut that off. And watch this. I don't mean to get cocky, but I'm probably going to get one on this cast. Oh. I'm going to have to eat my words. Oh man. Well, it's becoming evident with me and Andy as we were fishing up this stretch of stream. That someone is obviously of the the the. the, the. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Woo! Ah! Uh -huh. At WesternSportFishing.ca. <laughs> <laughs>